Brown Smurf. Yes, this top's a bit weird. How you doing, Rich? All right? And Nisky Pisky. Hello, Nisky Pisky. Do I sound all right? I've got my microphone on, plugged in. I think I've got everything I need. I've got a drink. Cheers. Happy Friday night. Just, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to go live because I came down with a bit of a headache. Hey Francis, um, starting I think to get to the bottom of my health problems. Hey Dion, just hello everyone, happy Friday. I think, I put this on my Instagram but I know not all of you do Instagram, I know Rich doesn't. Hey JC, um, I did put this on my Instagram, I think I've got what's called, slightly embarrassing, but I've got, I think, breast implant illness, which is basically um, your body having a reaction to the foreign bodies within you. And they've been in for years, but a lot of people do get issues later on. And these have been in for about 15 years and I, they do erode, the silicone erodes. I've seen pictures and videos of them being removed and it, it's all sticky, the plastic is eroding inside the body and guess what, this plastic is full of toxins, carcinogens, it's absolutely shocking. So they have to go and all the symptoms I've been getting lately, the headaches, the pain, the problem, various problems with my bladder, uh, problems with my stomach, my feet turning blue, all of that adds up to the symptoms that hundreds hundreds of thousands of other women are having. So just so you know, it's a bit off topic, but I do want to spread the word because I didn't know anything about it. It certainly wasn't uh, told to me as an option or, you know, as a possibility when I had them done. And it's not come up in any of the appointments I've had. And I've seen and spoken to so many doctors these last sort of what, two and a half months. And not one of them has said, have you got breast implants? Because it's not a recognised illness. So that's why at the moment people have to put this shit together themselves. So if you are uh, someone who's thinking of having them done, please do your research. Breast implant illness, just research it and then make your decision based on that. If you have them and you have had some numerous symptoms over the years. You might have put it down to aging, you might have put it down to all sorts of things. Just have a, have a research, research, just because it might be that there would be nothing wrong with you if it wasn't for these foreign objects that are toxifying your body and they give autoimmune uh, diseases to people because your body is basically fighting, constantly fighting what's inside you. So, no, I'd like to say now I've got that off my chest, but I haven't, they're still here, still here at the moment, but uh, they are going, trust me, and whether or not that cures my problem is neither here nor there. I've seen how toxic they are, the facts are out there, they're going, and I will be little, little, little old me again. Um, so let's have a look and see, we've got Scott, we've got John, we've got Joss. We've got Lizzie, uh, Karine. Hello everyone, thank you for coming along. I have got a beautiful box of stuff that I'm gonna show off with you. Get them out, says Rich. <laughs> um, we are sentient is here as well. Hey, we are sentient. Uh, yes, I've got an absolutely beautiful box of goodies that I'm gonna share with you. I have not smelt uh, most of them. There's, Two, I have smelt because, uh, well, one I shared today on Instagram, but if you didn't see that, I'll get to it. And the other, just curiosity, got the better of me, so I did uh, have a little go. Um, but there's still three, excuse me, still three are unsniffed. So let me know what you're wearing. Um, Rich Mitch, no, absolutely not. They are not, they're not safe. Even the brand new ones, they're, they're no different to um, what they've been putting in for, for 20, 30 plus years. 
they're all silicone even the saline ones that they are silicone coated and silicone if you google it is made up of about 40 different toxic chemicals so absolutely not no you can get your own fat injected or put in there but I just want them out and we'll see what I'm left with. It takes quite a long time to everything to settle and then to see how you're going to look, you know, long term. And if I'm really, really unhappy, I might consider a, just an uplift or something. But I will never, ever put a foreign body inside. Like, obviously, um, <laughs> we're not talking. <laughs> what am I? What am I? Okay, start again. I will never have a medical device or anything implanted inside me ever again. Because also the same symptoms happen to people that have hip replacements and other, um, you know, things put inside them. But if you think about the particular, the breasticles, they are, you know, you've got your lungs and your heart. So they're right there where the most important things are. So that, because I was thinking, well, how come earrings you know don't cause a problem and that, you know things like that things on the periphery but I think because it's right there in the in the most essential area of your body it's just bad so when you're uh, when you get breast implants it's an automatic autoimmune um, response from your body it will build a load of scar tissue around them to try and protect you so when I get them removed, I also have to get this, this horrible uh, sack of scar tissue removed at the same time. Otherwise, that toxic scar tissue, which is what's been absorbing a lot of the toxins, will carry on contaminating my body. So I'm probably going to do a blog about it or a vlog <laughs> um, as I get sort of nearer the time. I'll probably sort of take people through my journey. Hopefully at the end of it, I will be feeling better. But regardless, if it doesn't cure all my problems, I don't care. They've got to go. They've absolutely got to go. John says, well, Claire, becoming a nun. Uh, Dawn by Senses here. Hello, hope you're okay. Um, Rich Mitch says, Claire desires a foreign body. <laughs> Scott is wearing Begim, Ruby of Temur. I haven't heard of that one. Joss is wearing Adults by Killing. That's an appropriate fragrance to be wearing to one of my live streams, Joss. Um, Rich says, earrings aren't inside you, they're under the skin. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Uh, Kareem's wearing Tube Rose 1974 by Chloe. I really need to try those upper end Chloe's. They do look nice. Um, we are is wearing Beast Mode from Chris Rusak. And Chris is here. Hey, oh, Claire, you look fantastic today. Thank you, Chris. Pictures or it didn't happen, says Rich Mitch. Uh, Carty's here. Hey, Carty. Uh, Chris is wearing Prada Lom Intense. Uh, Nisky Pisky says, bless you for spreading the word. I had no idea. Well, that's the thing. Even if it doesn't affect you directly, the next time you're chatting with someone and they mention some random symptoms, just bear it in mind. It's worth a mention because... People are going to the doctor. I don't know what it is on average, but a lot of the people I've seen that have spoken about it in the, fragr in the groups, fragrance groups, in the groups on Facebook and in videos, they have had like 30 to 40 appointments with different doctors and specialists. And then uh, eventually found out about uh, breast implant illness, had them out and slowly over time got better. So, uh, if yeah, if someone in your life is suffering with lots of random stuff and they can't put it together, it's definitely something to think about. Obviously, if they've had breast implants or any other, as I say, any other um, implant in their body. Um, okay, uh, Rich Mitch is saying Sunday is meant to be scorching. Good. Oh, and I've lost me. I've lost my chat here. Oh, there we are. It's okay. We're all good. Lost my chat. Right. So, uh, well, let's get on with this. So, yeah, today I wasn't sure if I was. Oh, well, I wanted to go live, and then uh, I've been experimenting with food. So, I uh, have learnt that if you look after your liver, it can help you with all the autoimmune stuff. So, I've been eating 
a lot of fruit and veg and not much of anything. I know I've had no, well, I had no, almost no bread. Um, yeah, I've eaten pr pretty clean and I've been feeling pretty good for a few days. And there was, uh, the other night I had a pit of bread with my dinner and I got a stomach ache. So I thought, okay, bread, bread's probably not good for me. And today I, 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 got, I got hungry and it was coming up to tea time and I just couldn't be bothered. I looked in my fridge and I see all these tomatoes and stuff and I just, I, I was hungry and I needed like carbs. So I had um, seven rice cakes, just buttered rice cakes and um, instantly got a headache or sort of within 10 minutes, I got a headache after eating it and a whisper. I had a treat size whisper and I got a headache. And so I went to bed for a bit and now I feel better. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a live or not, but I really want to because I want to unbox these things with you and smell them live because it's fun. So yeah, um, feeling okay now. I've got a very mild headache just, just up here. So I probably need to just kind of like do it quick, just in case. Uh, Dawn is wearing a Grossmith Saffron Rose, Aqua de Pino Fugia, uh, Oh, on, uh, one on the left, one on the right. Um, Carty's wearing Bauer d'Afrique. Rich Mitch has an autoimmune disease. That's what's wrong with his back. Oh, okay, I didn't realise that. I know, you, I know you had a lot of pain and problems with your back, but I didn't know. Do you have, what's the actual diagnosis on it? Because um, there's a lot of talk of so many different things that I never even heard of, but a lot of these ladies have, uh, they have Lyme disease. Um, what else? My mind's gone blank now. Um, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, all sorts of things, but they're all generally linked to the autoimmune system because it is attacking, constantly attacking these foreign things inside you. Um, I had, had my vaccine no rich because I've had so many random symptoms since the last sort of two, three months, that I'm just afraid of throwing something else at me. Um, my white blood cells are still low, which means that, well, you'll know what that means. Anyway, you probably have the same thing. Um, so uh, the last thing I wanna do is, is play with my immune system when it's already clearly not right. So no, I haven't, and uh, um, I won't until I am better. And um, that's, that's my choice. I know some people might disagree, uh, but that's my choice for me to um, try and keep me healthy. Uh, Rich has got ankylosing spondylitis. It's a type of rheumatological disease. What's your CRP ESR? I don't know what that means. Uh, you're on immuno are you on a special diet, Rich? Right, okay. Um, <laughs> before this turns too medical, <laughs> and we are going to start smelling some stuff. So I'll show you one that I have smelt already, and that is... So it's all Tioni Reinfeldt. Tioni Reinfeldt is, uh, I'm sure most of you know by now, natural perfumer based in Australia. And I hadn't ordered anything for quite a while and suddenly was just overcome. <laughs> I've been really good. I haven't really felt like buying anything for it for quite a while. And I was just suddenly overcome with this need to order some stuff from Tioni. And, um, and I'm so glad I did. So we have here, it's a little, um, it's an oil and it's called... May Rose, it's um, a perfume oil. I've, I believe I had a sample of the EDP uh, a long time ago. And I, I just wanted this because it's so cute. <laughs> so um, Tioni calls it uh, May Rose, Rose Gold Maisie. That's her sort of affectionate term for it. So it's an oil, as soon as you pull it out of the box, you can smell it and it's just this beautiful rose. I don't know what the notes are, but it's one of those kind of fresh spring roses. You know, it's a pink rose, maybe with a little bit of a spiciness to it. And a touch soapy, I guess, as well, but um, I, I just think it's so cute and it's such a lovely, just a lovely fresh rose. 
and um, you know like just perfect to take to put in your handbag to take on holiday when finally you can go on holiday so yeah May Rose yeah it's cute um, Yeah, Richard, it's probably a good idea to avoid the vax till it's sorted. Yeah, that's what I thought. I did a bit of research amongst the other ladies and that seems to be the general consensus is it's probably not the best idea. Joss says, I love your backdrop pattern, so beautiful and fun. Yeah, I love it too. Thanks, Joss. Um, uh, Karine says, hmm, a pink rose. Yeah, it's, it's definitely pink and pretty and springy. Um... Garty says, yum, hashtag Rose Ho <laughs> present. Oh, Stefan's here. Lovely to see you again, beautiful. Is that good? Great to see you too, Stefan. Um, right, so that was Ro May Rose. So another uh, symptom of breast uh, implant illness, and most people say they have it, is a brain fog type situation. And I've been complaining now for weeks that I have trouble finding the right words. Sometimes I put the wrong word out. It sounds similar, but it means something else completely. And, you know, I've been Googling menopause and all sorts, but let's hope that's another thing that will clear up when I get rid of them. Because I do, you, you'll see, I mean, I don't know if you, how, how well you pay attention, but you'll see sometimes I struggle to find, I, I pause and I struggle to find that, that right word that I'm looking for. I mean, everyone does from time to time, but it has felt... Um, it's felt, see, I can't find, I can't explain it. It's been very frustrating, but it's like to, to find those words just then was this intense, like, trying in my head. So, I, you know, let's hope, let's hope I'm right about this. And, um, oh, I haven't got any testing strips. So should we do the samples next? So Tioni sent me three samples. Ta-da! Sent them in this lovely little silky what do you call it drawstring bag and there's three samples here saffron sanctum and prayer so they all i think i remember reading about them and thinking they might not be for me for for various reasons because of notes in them i guess saffron for example is not my favorite note on its own but it's great to be able to try them because oftentimes we think we won't like something based on the notes and it can turn out to be something that we love. So this is a fantastic opportunity to try them. Um, uh, Karine says, dang, I do it all the time, mixing up words. Yeah, no, it is, yeah, it, it happens, doesn't it? But um, I've really felt, I've really felt it lately um, to quite, to have, to a degree we've got quite frustrated and almost given up, you know, and you just can't even be bothered to try and say what you were trying to say. But, um, yeah, so I'm gonna, do you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm, it's not very professional, okay, but I'm gonna spray packing peanuts because this is Smurfy Girly, this is, this is not a, it's not a professional channel. You're not here for professionalism, otherwise you'd be somewhere else. So we're gonna start with saffron Saffron. Oh. oh, Yana's here. Hi there, do you have a new hairstyle? I do, Yana. I had to chop a ton off because I completely ruined my hair over lockdown. Dyeing it myself. Ble uh, bleached it quite a few times. You're not re you don't bleach dark hair. <laughs> I don't do it three times. It starts to come off. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can already smell saffron and, and I can smell that it is not my thing. It's, it is um that leathery kind of spicy saffron but we'll spray it uh if you love saffron this i mean this is rich just from smelling before spraying yeah joss says curls on fleek thank you joss it's so nice to have cut off because i also had a brazilian straightening treatment a kerosilk treatment and i didn't know it was actually gonna like make my hair dead straight stupid me and uh so I've been trying to get the curl back, but I couldn't. So it's so nice to have just chopped off all of the straight bits. And now it's pretty much everything's curly. Like 
it's a little bit um, bit sticking out because I had to get it cut quite short all around here so but it's nice it feels light and it's not in my way it's nice not to have it because in this I'm like quite hot here actually it's been a warm day and I'm a bit sweaty and it's so nice not to have my hair here it's lovely uh, Karine says I mostly struggle with saffron yeah it's it's sometimes it can be a note in a perfume and I and it doesn't bother me but it's got like um I think saffron's got a bit of a medicinal this this is kind of um it's reminding me of like a medicinal something in like um in the dentist and is no disrespect to Tioni because if you don't know already she's just done the most wonderful thing for me that I think anyone has ever done so you know she knows I love her but she also knows that I'm honest and she appreciates that as well and for me uh saf saffron and, and and this is kind of like it's making me think of something medicinal and, and it's, it's taking me a little bit to the dentist I mean, it's, it's rich, it's spicy, it's a little bit leathery. I mean, that's what saffron is. And of course, it will dry down and there will be different nuances. And I don't have the note listings. I don't know if I should look them up, maybe. Um, we can try, can't we? Um, T-R-N-P. I don't actually know. There we are straight away there's the website so i'm going to try and look them up whilst we are talking otherwise i'm not really going to do them justice um can we search or eau de parfums right so it does remind me of some what's it reminding me of i'm not sure right, let's find saffron so saffron is in the spring list Scroll down. Ah, bloody. <laughs> right, okay, what are we doing? Eau de Parfums, right, okay. Um, right, so, uh, so in my computer, it's, it's a pain in the ass and it's playing up. Right, Saffron. I've clicked on it. Let's see if it'll get us there. I'm sweating. I might have to open some windows. Um, saffron, Golden Light of Devotion, it says. And see what the notes are. If they okay, we've got neroli, bitter orange, rose de may, Bulgarian rose, jasmine, champaca, amaris, ambre seed, Indian cardamom, vanilla, mimosa, saffron absolute, Ethiopian apapanax, Somali oil, oil, olibanum, Omani frankincense, and Atlas cedarwood. I mean, what a what a note listing. But for me at the moment, I think it is just saffron that I can pick up on. And what I do, and I know quite a few other people do the same, is if there's a note that you don't jive with very well, you kind of can't find anything else but that note. And I think that might be what's happening here. On skin, in time, I'm sure other nuances will come out, but to me at the moment, it's very much that saffrony smell. So we won't spend too long on the samples because I've got a lot to do. I think I'm going to open the window, so bear with me because I'm, I'm sweating like PIG. So let's, oh, we'll open the back door. That will help, maybe a window as well. Okay, coming back now. I don't know why I'm whispering. Let's do sanctum. Let's spray sanctum. It's a little tiny bit. Pop that over here. And I'll get my keyboard. And check the comment. Oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Not good. Margie's here. Hey, Margie. And um, Francis also obsesses over notes she hates. Sanctum. Oh, that's nice. That's got a freshness. So that smells like, um, almost like a, a citrus. Um, this, is, this is really nice. It does remind me of 
Uh, there's one called Au, Au Naturel that I really like that I have a sample of and it's similar to that. I Sanctum, here we go. So it's in the spring list. Hmm. I have this really peaceful feel about it. So we've got lemon bergamot, pettigrain, lemon verbena, rosemary, a French lavender, cashmere lavender, Roman chamomile, clary sage, French rose geranium, rose de May, orange blossom, neroli, melissa, which is lemon balm, Italian alpine peppermint, Sumatran patchouli, Indian rosewood, sandalwood, amaris, cypress, fir needle, elamai, benzoin, labdanum, oil banum, and Ethiopian apopanax, royal green, hojari, omani, frankincense, Somali frankincense, and tolu balsam. Is that enough for you? Um, but I think my initial assessment <laughs> of uh, citrusy incense is definitely a good start. <laughs> proud of myself for that so we've got lots of citrus notes but there is a sweetness and I think that's probably coming from those florals because you've got rose and orange blossom and um, yeah and it is a see it is a sort of sweet floral at the same time it's really pretty I like this one a lot so I looked at this when I was looking to see what I wanted to buy I looked at sanctum and I was a, a little bit like, oh, there's a couple of lavenders in here. I don't know if I'll enjoy that. But I would never pick up on lavender. Not at the moment, anyway. It's a really lovely a citrus, fresh floral with a, an incense-y feel. There's not a heavy, like, church, typical church incense. It's much, a much lighter kind of fresh incense. It's really lovely. It's pretty. And I can totally see why it's called Sanctum. It's It's got this peaceful feel. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one a lot. So let's have a little sip and see what you're saying on the chat. Um, uh, Yara's here, hey Yara. And Hills, hey Hills. She says, hey all. Ah, right then we've got one more sample to do and this one's called prayer so there we are we're going to do it on a packing peanut again oh madeline's here hey maddie and katrin hey katrin right spray it here so you can see Uh, Fosco, uh, Tioni is absolutely wonderful. What a thoughtful gesture. We're lucky to have her. Also, Night Song is one of my favourite pickups of the year. I still haven't tried that. I've heard amazing things about it. But I think that is that an Oud one? And I, I, I've, I'm kind of nervous about Oud. But uh, yeah, I've heard wonderful things about Night Song. So we have then Prayer. And let's smell it. That's interesting now I'm gonna treat see if I can guess what's in it before I look it up I have looked all of these up at some point because I went through the whole website but I can't obviously remember <laughs> this is another one that's definitely got some freshness to it but not as much as the last one so it's it feels like there's a little bit of citrus and there's a little bit of green like fresh greenness and again, some more grounding notes like maybe a patchouli and some different resins. But this isn't as, so Sanctum was kind of pretty, it had those pretty florals. This one doesn't feel like it has that. Karine says, I'd love to try her fragrances. Honestly, anyone who truly loves Anyone who truly loves, I didn't, I couldn't decide whether to say perfume or fragrance, but whatever. Any, anyone who loves smelling stuff, 
and appreciates quality, uh, real like amazing, amazing materials, then they owe it to themselves at some point to try these fragrances. What am I getting here? So there's like an earthiness and there's a little bit of a spiciness. Almost, and maybe even a tea, but not a tea that I I don't like. Because <laughs> often I don't like tea, but almost like if I was smelling dry tea, or dry tea or even tobacco or something. Something quite dark in here. Let's have a look now. Prayer. Um, Prayer. I reckon this is going to come under the autumn, maybe. Nope. Prayer. It's a summer fragrance. See, to me, it's a bit darker. I wouldn't necessarily uh, have thought it was a summer fragrance, but there you go. Right, so what have we got here? Amaris, which I think is a wood. Um, I haven't looked it up recently. <laughs> uh, I've looked it up a few times and then forgotten what it is, but I think it's some sort of wood. White Cypress, Northern Australian Sandalwood, West Australian Sandalwood, Australian grown Indian Sandalwood, Atlas Cedar, Indian Rosewood, Tolly Balsam, Somali Frankincense, Armani Opapanax, Olibanum, South American Black Copal, Armani Royal Green Hajari, Canadian Red Pine, Frankincense Dalziel, Frankincense Ferrana, Frankincense Papyrifera. So we have lots of sandalwood and lots of frankincenses and um, resins. So I was saying I smell citrus. There's none listed, but I do get a freshness. Now, now I see sandalwood. I can appreciate it's sandalwood. But there's, it feels, I mean, there's things here I don't know what they are. Black copal, South American black copal. This is really nice. They all seem to have this um, slightly memphilated, mysterious, incense magic type accord. It seems to run through every perfume that Tioni makes kind of hard to pinpoint exactly but I mean people always talk about oh yeah this house has this DNA this is more than that there's a very distinct character to these perfumes and it is that it, that it's something to do with sort of incenses and it's and just magic there's just something magical that is in all of them that I think if you become familiar with a few, if you smell some, if you smell a perfume uh, without knowing what it was, you'd be able to say that's that's the Tioni Reinfeld perfume. Like uh, Francesca Bianchi has a very distinct style and signature, Tioni does too. And yeah, this is really nice. And looking at the notes, I wouldn't expect to like it as much as I do because it's lots and lots of woods and resins and no vanilla or florals or anything. But so it's so good. It's really, really good. Prayer, really, really nice. So let's have a little drinky poos and see, uh, see what we're saying. Um, we are, says Tioni's work is next level, kind of 3D. Yes, Madeline says they've been on my wish list for ages. John says, my, my recommendation is Blue Lotus to Maddie. Um, <laughs> Rich Mitch says, Australian grown Indian sandalwood is a mouthful. Yeah, and now you've made me say it twice. And Eugene is here. Hey, Eugene, nice to see you. Uh, Lizzie Bean is back with a violet gin and tonic. Alcohol needed, it's Friday and it's too hot. Cheers to that, Lizzie Bean. Okay, right. So what's next? Okay, so I'm going to save the special one to last. 
they're all special <laughs> make no mistake they're all special but I'm saving the one that I mentioned earlier today on Instagram for those of you that haven't seen it actually I did do a little post on YouTube as well but I'm going to save that special one to last and I'm going to uh, do this one honey amber so I had the solid perfume of this one and I really loved it, it really grew on me actually. Uh, the first time I smelt it was in, the, I think it was in a live stream and I felt like it was slightly indolic and um, it had this sort of animalic feel, very floral, kind of giving you beach vibes at the same time though, but it also felt slightly animalic so, um, but the more I, I wore it, the more I loved it. So I kind of wanted to try the perfume, the EDP, because it's slightly different. I understand this has a big dose of frangipani in it that Honey Amber Solid doesn't. And I just thought, yeah, I want it. So here we are. So obviously I haven't tried this version. I've only tried the solid. How do we do this? Pick the label off or do we... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna pick the label off to allow the lid to open, or what do you call it? I don't know. Open the box, we'll open the box. I can't do it. I know, Ooh. right, okay, box is open. <laughs> um, we're talking about pink poo emoji. I don't know why, I need to know. So let's um, see if we can Scroll back a little bit. Oh, I see. So John's mentioned poopy door Tom, meaning poop pro door Tom. And Carty said poopy. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lizzie is remembering the pink poop emoji. So um, on a similar topic, my, my fox that comes with the the smallish one, the young fox, left me a present the other day and it absolutely reeked by the way, left me a present literally just out there. And I've always joked with Sam about uh, the glitter shitter, the, this um, silly thing that I think goes on sometimes where people will, um, they, they sprinkle sparkles, glitter on random dog poos they find. And um, it's, these kind of things have always fascinated me. So I found some nail gems in my cupboard, a little, the star, they're like Shor Shorovsky crystals, but they're star shaped, different colors. So I got some, some nail gems and I sprinkled them on the fox poo. And I just left them there for Sam to discover when he came round for a cup of tea. So I think he found that fairly amusing. Um, I've since cleared, I let the poo dry up a little bit and I've cleared it away today and it's still, even though it's all dried up, it's stunk to high heaven. Foxes are, foxes are dirty and smelly creatures. So here we are. So this is Honey Amber. Here we go. Look at the colour of that. Wow. I mean, you just know, don't you? When you look at that, you just know that's going to be something pretty amazing so I'm gonna I've only got one wrist I'm gonna save that I'm already wearing one of these but I'm saving this wrist and we'll go on with with one of these perfumes in a minute <laughs> uh, John says how very generous of him are you gonna call him basil brush uh, yeah maybe um, the fox has domesticated you now says Carti <laughs> Uh, Lizzie says fox poop is the most rank, but that sleeping foxlet is adorable. Yeah, he's he's lovely when he's sleeping. He's not so lovely when he's pooping. Um, love how simple but quality Tioni bottles are. Yes, me too. Right then, let's spray it. Ooh, big spray, big spray. So I kind of you know feel like I know what I'm going to get because I had the solid, but this has the extra frangipani that's not listed with the solid perfume so we'll uh we'll see oh that's nice 
yeah that's really pretty um blue lotus ballpark yeah oh yes it's so nice um it is giving it's making me think blue lotus it's not the same as blue lotus but i think blue lotus did have frangipani in it so maybe that's why so i'm getting that fresh floral that flesh flesh fresh um obviously it's a frangipani but um i think there's jasmine and orange blossom as well but i'm i'm getting more of the the feel of the floral in blue lotus than i am the solid perfume honey amber so it's that kind of a fresh but really pretty flower and it's a little sweet so this does have i think it's benzoin and vanilla and, and there's a few other things as well i really like this it is amazing and it's not the same as the solid it's fairly i mean it's in the same realm i guess but i'm not picking up the animalic aspect that i get from the solid perfume this is more of a, a pretty area floral i'm in heaven honestly i absolutely love this I was so, because I was teetering, I was like, do I need, if I've got the solid, do I really need the Eau de Parfum? And then when Tioni said it does have frangipani, I was like, oh, I love frangipani. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm starting to get a little more of what's in the honey amber. But not, as I say, not the animalic side of it. This is really, really good. I really want to put this on my skin, but... I'm limited. I've only got the one arm, so maybe I can do two. We'll do one on the wrist. I might be able to do three, maybe. We'll see. Love it, love it, love it. Like it's giving me, it's kind of giving me a holiday, exotic island feels, but not in that cliche beach fragrance way. You know, it doesn't smell of coconut. It doesn't smell of suntan lotion, but it's like you're on a tropical island with the most beautiful flowers blowing in the breeze around you so it's airy oh yeah i love it um right let's have a look lizzie says i have my eye on pink lotus which is pretty rosy scent i have to get some decants too need some more tioni in my cupboard <laughs> we all need more tioni in our cupboard um madeline says sounds utterly gorgeous fingers crossed there's no real honey in there so i can try it i think there was in the solid, but then that was in a, no, that was in a beeswax um, base, so you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, oh, Tioni's here. She says, hi, Claire, just woke up in time to tune in. Hello, Tioni. Um, and Heather's here as well. I didn't see your initial comment, Heather, but welcome. Good to see you. Tioni, I don't know if you saw, I just smelt honey amber and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's absolutely beautiful um yes so let's have a little um cheers everyone and welcome to yoni ah there we go right shall we try sacred well, no i think we'll, we'll no we'll do sacred ground next we're going to do um jacques so this one is jacques and this one was kindly gifted to me by Tioni. Uh, I placed my order and she, I was sort of chatting to Tioni before I placed my order. And I was debating, was trying to sort of figure out which ones I should get. And then she said, I'm going to gift you Jacks. And um, so this is a gift. Thank you, Tioni. Here we go. We're going to smell it. So Jacques is, um, I think Tioni was, challenged by Nick Hill. Uh, you, I'm sure you all know who Nick Hill is. Nick Hill, Nick Hill Sense, isn't it? And um, uh, he challenged Tioni to create a Shalimar out of natural materials. And I think 
from reading and listening to Tioni talk about it on YouTube. Uh, we're going to cut it all. No, we're going to we're going to peel the label. I understand that Tioni, you please uh, correct me or, or add anything I'm missing. You weren't initially sure that you wanted to do that, and then uh, you kind of um, were ruminating and contemplating, and suddenly everything fell into place, and it just just happened or you know it was almost like a the way you described it was almost like it was a spiritual experience so uh, I, I've been curious to try this for quite a long time uh, Karine says ooh that sounds so interesting Jax um, Elaine says better late than never welcome aboard Elaine good to have you John says hey Tioni the nicest lady on the planet totally absolutely agree so here we go and we'll take this out of his little blanket Jacques so a natural Shalimar now my experience with Shalimar I've never owned a bottle I have only ever tried it in a I remember actually I specifically remember I knew that it was a fragrance that we should all know about it's an important fragrance in history and I was at duty free and I, I tried, I think it was the EDT versus the EDP. I was in the duty free and I picked uh, one for each hand to try and figure out um, the differences and what I thought about them. And, and then for the duration of the journey, kept, kept smelling them. And I kind of knew that it's not quite for me. There's something a little um, harsh with that lemony bergamot opening something that and this of course is modern day formulation not um the vintage which i understand will be slightly different so jacques here we go i feel um kind of rude now that tioni's here and i'm spraying packing peanuts with her gorgeous perfume i, I i'm already coated in um the the perfume we're going to be talking about a bit later and I've just left one arm to spray in a minute, but I wanted to just spray them all first. So I'm sorry that we're spraying packing peanuts. I actually find them pretty good because they're very absorbent. <laughs> so, um, oh, this is good. Lizzie says, I've never smelled a Shalimar, but a natural version sounds very beautiful. Um, Carty, I've only smelt Shalimar in store. That is all my experience of it so far. <laughs> Madeline says, oh, packing peanuts. Okay, so I do, I can see how this is similar to Shalimar. But it doesn't feel uh, as harsh as that sharp opening that Shalimar has. But it definitely has a sharpness to it. I think Shalimar is leather, isn't it? Oh, oh my God, there's Oris in here, isn't there? Tioni, there's the most gorgeous Oris I just noticed. <laughs> I'll put it on my nose now. So, what am I getting? Kind of like, yeah, so it is lemony, bergamotty. With a, I wouldn't call it leather at the moment, but something a little darker and I'm picking up like a suede like Oris so it doesn't smell exactly like suede but I think of the texture of suede and think of how iris smells obviously it has different facets but this is that it's making me think a little bit of like the Dior Homme line as well the iris in, in those. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I keep putting it on my nose. I shouldn't do that because it's going to interfere with everything later. I love this. Um, excuse me. Sorry if you heard that. Um, John, I don't know if you'll like this because there is a a, quite a prominent citrus and there's like um, 
a pretty floral. I don't remember what the floral, the orange blossom, I can't remember what's in Shalimar. Oh, it's lovely. This isn't, a, putting it on a packing peanut is, is, is shambolic of me. So I am going to put this on the skin now. Um, it does have that vintage feel. So we're going to do, this whole arm is clean, so I'm just going to, I'm going to do a little bit here. Just a tiny bit here. Because this deserves skin. Well, they all do. My gosh. Um, Lizzie says, Claire, Claire is a happy bunny with her basket of Tioni. Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Joss is back. Good to see you back, Joss. Um, no, it doesn't smell like neroli to me, John. It, it is, well, I don't know if there is neroli in there, um, but it smells more, I don't get that, um, the bitterness that you can get from neroli. It's more, I don't know. Oh, there is, there's a lot going on in here. There is um, this sharp citrusy, which is kind of like a lemon, bergamot, maybe even a tiny bit of orange. Um, but you can smell the iris and it reminds me of the iris in Ekaterina. I don't know, uh, Tioni, if, if I'm right, but it totally reminds me of the iris in Ekaterina, which is the fragrance that rem makes me think of pink, but is it pink ballet shoes? Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, But I also feel like there's a little fresh greenery in here. Oh, it's it's really good. But I think it's the iris that's really capturing me. This is where Tioni tells us there is no iris in here. Well, it's Shalimar. I'm sure Shalimar has iris, doesn't it? But um, oh, this is absolutely beautiful. I'm blown away. I love it. Okay, right, so I'm gonna keep going for now. Um, so we've got uh, this one to do, Sacred Ground. So Sacred Ground, um, from memory was, I remember that Tioni did a, an Instagram post about this and it's to do with her being inspired by Australia and um, and I think sort of like she did bittersweet uh, at the end of last year which was about how how the year had been sort of bittersweet and the, all the terrible but also amazing things that had happened and then I think sacred ground is almost like a follow-on to that and I think maybe uh, more positive or like more more leaning on the positive side I'm um, and I remember commenting and Tioni said she'd, she'd kind of thought of me at some stage of, uh, of the creation progr progress, process. Um, so um, I had to have this, of course. And so yeah, we have sacred ground. We're gonna peel the sticker up and I probably should look up these, these notes. Oh, so Elaine's got a compliment. Um, you smell lovely, Mum. A rare compliment from wearing La Tessa from Mask Milano. Um, hi from America. It says twelve pretty things. Twelve pretty things. I've honestly only had half of a drink. I promise you. I'm just my brain's not working very well today. Um, so I do apologise and I'm a little bit my energy level is not great but hopefully it, it gives a calm vibe <laughs> and hopefully you can pick up on my happy happy vibes as well so oh this one's in a little white blanket sacred ground so um, I can't remember the notes I will look them up for you in just a second Oh, look, another dark one. Look at the 
look at the colour of that. So we're gonna spray <laughs> we're gonna spray another packing peanut. Uh, Karine says, have I tried Francois? I've been curious about this one too. I have not. That's Jax is the first one in that little triptyque that I've tried. That was the one that grabbed me the most. I think it's Francois is um, based on Francois Coty, isn't it? Um, and so therefore is a fougere. I could be wrong. Okay. Did you hear that? I went, <laughs> sacred grounds. I'm kind of afraid. Why am I afraid? <laughs> We're going to let that settle just a second before I, I smell it. Jimbo's here. Uh, hey, Jimbo. And oh my God. Wow. No, okay. This is, this is quite different to everything we've smelt so far in a good way. Um, I've never smelt anything like this in my life and it's exciting me because oh it smells do you know what it's making me think of it's making me think of smoke um not that it smells not that it smells exactly smoky almost like um hookah hookah smoke shisha is it shisha um it's it's like a hippie kind of um, colourful 60s feel. I mean, I often talk about head shops or uh, as uh, um, head shops, incense shops, you know, the places you can buy tarot cards and, and pipes to smoke your, your various drugs. It's giving me that feel. It's making me think of um, tobacco, but it, I don't think it smells like tobacco, but it's making me think of smoke. It's making me think about smoking drugs which obviously I don't do. Um, I'm gonna look the notes up in a second. I think I was expecting this to be more, more like bittersweet, a little more gourmandy and, and sweet, but this is, um, I mean, what the hell is this? I do not know, but it's the most interesting thing ever. And I love it. <laughs> um, this is mental, so let's, I'm going to look these notes up. It's crazy. Let's see where um where is it stored? So it's called Sacred uh, Sacred Ground. So it's it's in the summer. It's under the summer list. It's all, I'm thinking of mist. Like I'm smelling everything through through a mist, you know, um, and it's but it's humid. Uh, Okay, what have we got? Tasmanian baronia. So I don't know what that smells like. I think it's a rare flower that's only available in Australia. You've got red desert rosewood. Three sublime stocks of the sweetest, creamiest Australian sandalwood. Honey myrtle, manuka, CO2 argawood, and hand tinctured organic balina honey. Yeah, so how on earth would you know what that combination smells like? And I tell you what, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I mean, it's it still got, it still, it smells really different from, from everything I've ever smelt by Tioni, but it still has that uh, character, that very distinctive, mysterious um, thing, that little signature thing, but wow, oh, this is otherworldly. <laughs> I need a moment. <laughs> Sacred ground is a syrup of wild honey, native nectars, malted earthy floral sweetness and creamy sweet caramelized wood. It is something else. I mean, I can't do this justice. I can't do any any of these justice with words, but in particular, sacred ground. 
is all of these fragrances have that almost rich, rich ritual or spiritual, spiritual. Um, you know, they, they, we've tried uh, sanctum and prayer, sacred ground, sacred. They all have this almost religious, without it necessarily being any, you know, particular religion, but maybe just more that um, that connectivity with the greater power, that um, peace, you know, peace and love. If you want to, if you want to, you know. I don't know how to how to say it, but they all they feel spiritual. They feel like um, they're not just perfumes. They are living, breathing tools to connect you with whatever your higher power is. You know, whether it is a, a god or, or whatever, whatever you believe in, it will connect you and. This sacred ground is out of this world. And I, I think it could be what heaven smells like. <laughs> am I going too far? No, I don't think I am. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> Elaine says, here we go. Another on my, li my wish list. Lisa's here. She says, um, oh, talking about the, the wenches, the spanners. <laughs> Uh, Lizzie says connectivity with a greater power. That sounds beautiful to me. It is. It's. It's crazy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Kareen fought spanker. <laughs> I think that's that's just your dirty mind, Kareen. Spanner. <laughs> your French mind says Lizzie. Um. Yeah, uh, John says, amazing to see the power of fragrance live. Yeah, I don't know. You don't get this. Now, Mia earlier did a live stream with um, a young man, Emozioni uh, fragrance. I don't know anything. I, I missed the beginning and I don't know anything about the house or anything. But it came up that uh, fragrances without a story, without something behind them, they lack soul. And... This is something I've been feeling for a long time. If I sat here and, and, and um, sprayed, uh, you know, Prada candy gloss, you know, I, I really enjoy how that smells. If I sprayed uh, my Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle, again, I love how it smells. But these are fragrances that they just smell good. Like you enjoy them, you can find them addictive. They, they carry out a function. Then I'm not putting them down because they're, you know, they're, they're lovely, but they don't do this to you because Tioni is, 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 is there in, in this beautiful place and she is um, finding and, and I think in some cases tincturing her own ingredients and um, she has these just magical components and then she uses, you know, she does meditation and um, she's connected with the the beauty of the world and she finds this um, this energy and she puts these gorgeous perfumes together. She's not thinking, oh, um, rose oud's trending now, so I'm gonna make a rose oud. She has a reason behind everything that she does and you can feel it. And I feel a bit emotional, <laughs> like, <well. laughs> but we haven't even got to the emotional part yet. Um, <laughs> Nisky Pisky says you're killing me. I need to smell that. Um, Jim says um, you can't fake emotion like that. Uh, uh, in, sorry, I've lost it. Um, Lisa says the inner spanktum. <laughs> um, I've got a little bit of a pain going on at the moment. I've been doing really well with pain, um, but I did eat something earlier that I probably shouldn't have. So. It might be connected to that. Um, I'm just feeling a bit sorry for myself now. But it's not too bad. Um, Madeline says, I think the search for this feeling is what motivates me to keep exploring perfume, really. I think that's, yeah, that can be a part of it, can't it? You just, um, you, yeah, you're always looking for something that moves you to that degree. 
I mean, I honestly, like, these perfumes are so beautiful. And that doesn't mean that you don't need some of the more functional fragrances in your life. I mean, I wouldn't just throw these on without a thought. These are something special. And, you you, you know, just like Tioni has, a, has so much behind why and how she creates it, you owe it the respect to to wear it with reason, with purpose. And I think I will definitely do that with these. I'll be... I'll be looking to um, to wear them depending on the mood that I'm in, the mood that I'm looking to create, the 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 place I'm going to be. Everything's going to be behind my, you know. I'm going to be thinking about why I'll be wearing these perfumes because they aren't just um, functional. Throw them on because probably people around me will like them, or um, or I feel like wearing something sweet you know there's there's going to be a thought process or not necessarily a thought process but tuning in with the emotions and stuff that makes you choose to wear what what you choose to wear from Tioni and this sacred ground I'm loving and it is like nothing else um Elaine says, never underestimate the power of fragrance. Scott says, I believe a fragrance should spark all our senses. Francis says, sending you a big virtual hug, Claire. Thank you, Francis. Um, uh, mm, okay, absolutely love that. So, okay, I'm going to pop that one on. Where do we go? Right, so we went... So we went there with Jacques, and that's changing. That's getting a little sweeter. I can feel a touch of vanilla coming through. Oh, I can feel um, a little bit of of the embers thing in here. I don't know if Tioni used that same vanilla or something else in common, but this really smooth, gorgeous vanilla a lot of the citrus is gone now and it feels more like a, an iris vanilla velvet textured um, velvet silk I don't know something very very fine and lovely Jacques is gorgeous okay so we're gonna go on skin with sacred ground because it would be wrong not to. So we're going to go here. Just a tiny bit because I'm going to spray something else a further up my arm, I think. Uh, yeah, we're going to do honey amber, actually, further up the arm in a minute, but I don't want to overwhelm. Another thing with, um, with such complex fragrances made of such beautiful materials, they deserve to be uh, tried in separate situations not all at once like I'm doing here so um, I found that when I did um, when I first tried Francesca Bianchi's perfumes I did them all at once in a, a video with Dan and it was overwhelming because they are so complex and 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 I had to put those fragrances away and come back to them much much later down the line before then I fell in love with a couple of them and um, and whilst there's a completely different feel here, it's still beautifully um, very different, unusual, gorgeous, complex fragrances. And they deserve to be taken one at a time. But obviously that wouldn't make for a very great live stream. So I'm doing them all at once. Um, roll on payday, says Madeline. <laughs> Um, Lizzie says, Claire, will it be too hard to find a favourite tonight? I guess all are special and unique in their own significant way. Yeah, I, I, I would say that's probably... I would feel, um, I'd feel like I, I just couldn't because um, I couldn't rate them. Because, yeah, they're, and they're, they're actually, they are all different. Um, so they're not, it's not like you're rating 
similar things. Do you know what I mean? But I, I, I will try. I'll try for you. Um, right then. So we're going to put the honey amber on the skin. So we'll put that right up here. So I try to keep it away from the others. Um, and just a tiny spray again. And then, so we've got them all, we've got all the full bottles on skin, except there's one more, which is already on skin. So, um, honey amber on skin. Uh, honey amber on skin reminds me a little bit more of the solid perfume, but it might just um, be that opening, but it does still give me that blue lotusy kind of feel at the same time like it did. I think, Lizzie, in terms of how the fragrances move me um, out of these three, Sacred Ground really did hit me hard for some reason, um, emotionally in a good way. And And um, Jacques, I think mean, now that the citrus has died down, I, I do definitely really enjoy it even more, I think, because it's so smooth and um, it's that kind of fuzzy, it feels musky, uh, clean, musky, fuzzy, iris, slightly vanillic. I'm sure there's probably benzoin, I can't remember, the, but you know, Shalimar, you've heard the note listing so much, that, you know, most of us probably know roughly what's, what, what it is. I'm pretty sure it's benzoin, isn't it? Um, so it does have like really smooth and slightly sweet uh, resiny feel, but not, um, not a harsh resin at all. So it's really calming. Not when you first spray it, because the citrus is quite um, quite sharp, but now it's very calming, and the sort of uh, the sort of fragrance anyone could wear and not worry. You wouldn't have to worry if you're working with children. I think they'd love it. You'd be. It's almost like um, an adult's version of of dolls' heads. You know, like um, it's got that comforting sweetness about it. A slight hint of the citrus is left, but it's not really smelling citrusy. It's just giving it a slight zest, a slight um, refreshing element to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Honey amber. I think maybe honey amber, I might like honey amber a little bit more just because it's a bit bolder. I thought I saw something, but it's a shadow. It's a little maybe bolder and I think I love the florals and it's making me think of holidays and things. So where Jacques is more introspective, contemplative, wear it for yourself and find peace. And Honey Amber is a little more playful, a little more fun, a little more outgoing. And um, you wear it for yourself because you love it, but you also would be quite confident that people would say you smell really pretty, you smell really like fun and flirty. Mm. So Lizzie says, Sacred Ground sounds like something quite special to you to jolt your senses and take you somewhere new. Honey Amber seems rather beautiful. Yep, uh, Sacred Flow, hello, yes, hello, lovely, do you get honey and amber, with honey amber, um, see I don't specifically smell honey, more a honeyed floral, you know how flowers can smell a little like honey, as well as smelling like flowers, like that, yeah, oh, <laughs> And sacred ground is that. See, that's got the honey myrtle note in it. Sacred ground has, I guess, a slight herbal 
skill. Um, it's like a lemony herbal thing that's happening now. Almost like lemon sherbets a little bit, which is so different to how it started. But so much more than that. It's good. Um, uh, they're, oh, they're also good. So I've got one more to show you. So I have undone this and I have been wearing it all day. And um, there was something about this box. I've, I've not been able to put it back together properly. And I've had to retie the ribbon. It's not as pretty as it looked, but there was something about this box. When I saw it, that delicate little ribbon I kind of knew I had this feeling it was going to be something special and so I undid it and I pulled it out and that's what I saw it said sweetie on it so I got really emotional I've got a sweetie perfume and so I got in touch with Tioni and and she said she'd made it especially for me to remind me of sweetie to kind of connect me with sweetie to try and heal my heart and um, <laughs> I don't want to cry um, but I did, yeah, when I first saw it, I, and then I didn't spray it straight away. I wanted to speak to Tioni first, and um, and then she kind of talked me through what um, her creation, the idea behind it. Um, so I've got it in various stages, <laughs> um, but I'm going to do a respray on my hand. Um, and she talked me through how the opening is, uh, in her words, I think she said, uh, I don't know if she said harsh, but words to that effect, um, as in how uh, an exotic short hair cat has that kind of grumpy, don't mess with me face. And the idea is that um, then the fragrance, uh, as it evolves, it softens and kind of like smooths and um, the thing is, I think Tony expected me not to like it straight away. And she, you know, she said, take your time with it. Um, as it develops, it will grow on you. But I loved it from the first spray. Oh, okay, right. Let's have a little look at your comments. Look at all these emojis. <laughs> Um, so many emojis. Um, Tioni says, so happy you like prayer. Um, I think, Tioni, you might be watching it. Um, I don't know if you're watching it current, up to current, because I know I, I did prayer a little while ago. Um, but... Anyhow, we all, <laughs> you'll, you'll get here soon. Um, have you got tissues for us all, says John. Um, grab the tissue, says Francis. <laughs> Jimbo, I have, damn, I have something in my eye. Pure sweetness, says sacred flow. Um, <laughs> sacred flow says tears are beautiful if they want to flow. Oh my goodness, says Sally. Um, Madeline says, this is just so moving, really restores my faith in hum humanity. <laughs> Lizzie says, thanks for cheering our Claire up, Tioni. Francis says, Claire, you are so special to us all and deserve this precious perfume. Thank you, Francis. Um, such a beautiful tribute, says we are. I think I've missed a comment from Tioni. Um, let's have a look. Okay, I'm not... right. I don't think so. Right, here we go. Um, so, um, so how to describe sweetie? 
so sweetie does remind me of the honey amber solid so i feel like it has that sort of indolic thing that's in the solid perfume honey amber and i can kind of uh sense and i'm i think there's the uh, i think tioni said that there's the jasmine and the orange blossom so i get this kind of it reminds me a little bit of a honey amber solid but then it also reminds me of embers a little bit and I did ask Tioni, is it the same vanilla that's in Embers? And it is. It's got that really, really smooth, sumptuous, not too sweet vanilla that's, but it's not the same. So the vanilla in Embers or an accord in Embers maybe goes a touch marzipan, which I love. This one doesn't feel like it goes as marzipan. So it must be to do with a combination of ingredients but it has, it's this combination of um, slightly sharper florals with this animalic touch. And it's not animalic as in, I mean, indoles are often said to smell a bit fecal and I wouldn't say this smells fecal. It's, and it doesn't smell like, you know, a deer musk can smell like um, actual animals, almost like meaty, um, and sometimes almost barbecued meat doesn't do that either. So, um, how to describe the animalic element? I don't know, but it's just like, it's balanced. So you've got sweet, you've got sharp, you've got fresh, you've, it's all, um, doesn't really feel right to, to even try and dissect it. It's just, I love it from start to finish. It's um, punchy at first, as Tioni said, punchy is a good word. Punchy with the florals and a, a hint of this animalic. And and there was a point where it smelled almost minty. Um, and in a few fragrances that Tioni does, there is, um, I sometimes feel this mintiness and uh, so I don't know if it's a patchouli that she uses. I get it in Tafe Rose, but I don't think Tafe Rose has actually has officially got patchouli, but to me it's smelled like um, a minty patchouli. Um, and I got like a just earlier, I got a hint of this minty, minty combination of, of almost a minty dark, like a raw cocoa with a minty um, part to it. And then underneath it, you can feel this smooth, slightly sweet, lovely kind of vanillic thing. It is amazing. It's, it's so beautiful and so touching to think that Tioni has quietly, <laughs> secretly been working on this thinking about me, caring about me, wanting to show her love. And um, yeah, <laughs> here we go. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna drink. And I am touched beyond any words I can express. And I absolutely love the perfume and I've been wearing it all day and it's really special. It's really special. I said to Tioni, I feel like you've tuned into me when you created this because it, it, it's everything that I love. It's, it's, all, it's not just the notes that I love, it's this, um, the way that it changes, the, the movement of it, the combination of the of the different parts so it's not just it's not flat it's a moving it's a moving thing it's undulating and um and that's what i love in perfumery i've never really liked things that are, are very linear and um yeah i like texture and i like things i like flow and i like things to change 
and this does all of that and it is i mean if i if i had um been say commissioning a custom set and we got here i would say that's this is it now you need to stop this is perfect it is that the perfect scent it's it's amazing um thank you tioni so much i can't wait to i'm gonna meet you one day <laughs> i can't wait to meet you give you a big hug and um buy you a pint which kind of um <laughs> is a little underwhelming after this but um i'd love to have a drink with you and a proper chat and i'd love to get into the nitty-gritty of what you do because it's something else <laughs> uh, Tiani says I saw you open honey amber and my heart skipped at your reaction really happy you like it absolutely lo I absolutely love every one of these they are something else amazing just as the little figurine you put in your thumbnail was so beautiful too. Yeah, that was a present from my friend Debbie who came round and um, uh, when she found out I'd lost my little sweetie. So yeah, lovely angel holding a, holding a pussycat. Little sweetie. Sweetie in heaven. But lives on now in, uh, in my gorgeous perfume. Sweetie. Sweetie. I talked to sweetie all the time um, um i put the perfume so what you saw in the thumbnail is is where the perfume is, is probably going to live for a while it's going to be part of her little shrine i walk past it it's on the fireplace i walk past it and i go sweetie <laughs> and that's where because you, you the little bamboo um, package is her ashes um Lizzie says, Sweetie lives on through Tioni's beautiful creation. Yeah. Sally says, Oh, Claire, that fragrance is such an amazing and thoughtful tribute to Sweetie. It sounds incredible. It really is. Yeah. Time to musk up is here. Hey, time to musk up. Late again, he says, Hello, Smurfy. Hello, chat. <laughs> uh, Richard is here. Hey, Richard. <laughs> Tiani says, I love the scented packing peanuts. Phew. <laughs> yeah, they didn't feel, um, uh, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't do the perfumes justice, but they work, you know. So, recycling. <laughs> Time to musk up. Wait, what? Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear it, sweet. I hear that. She was adorable. Thank you. Time to musk up. Yeah, um, I lost her in the middle of May. Um, so, yeah, but. She lives on in this perfume. She lives on in, in my heart. I think she probably lives on in many of your hearts as well. Um, John says, Sweetie's always here too. Big hugs, Claire. We do love you. Thank you, John. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I'm probably done now. I think we've done everything and I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> um, so, uh, hey, making sense. Um, Corinne says, when I lost my cats, I could still feel their presence like they didn't leave my side. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes, um, sometimes I hear a little, uh, a little noise and, you know, I know it's not really sweetie, like it turns out to be the blind rut in the wind, <laughs> but I still, um, I let myself believe it's her and, and sometimes I imagine her jumping on the bed curling up next to me okay oh dear <laughs> um so i am gonna leave it there because now i'm a wreck <laughs> i thank you all so much for being here today and for being here in in my life um you're all wonderful people and a massive thank you again to Tioni for her I, what, I, don't, I don't know what to say like, for her beautiful kind gesture um, for 
for bringing stunning perfume with soul to the world and I do hope that uh, many of you will at some point get to try her creations because they really are something else and it looks like they are starting to become slightly more widely available. I saw that they're in Sweden now, there's an online boutique in Sweden. So uh, if you follow Tioni's Instagram, you can then track who, uh, if she gets a new stockist, you can find out. And um, you can always order directly from Tioni. And, um, and she, I think she does post pretty much uh, worldwide or thereabouts. So um, I do hope that you all at some point get to try her perfumes because they are amazing. So thank you everyone and I'm checking out. I'll catch you all very, very soon. Mwah.